Hi, it's Paris from Epic Answer Guys, and today's question is, what are RFID tags? Well, the RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification, and that identification is just a code number. Really, that's all it is. And it's similar in a way to the barcode that's on the outside of a package, where if you have a scanner, it interprets those black lines, thick ones, thin ones, and spaces into a code, except you don't need to find a barcode and scan it to find out about that object. The little radio chip that's inside of the product, that's usually where they place it, or inside the pallet of goods, it will be activated when it's put near an RFID scanner. An RFID scanner, sometimes it's a wand, sometimes it's a larger machine, but basically what it does is it puts out energy on a certain frequency and when it is within operating range of the RFID chip, that RFID chip will take that energy and use it to activate itself. So basically the RFID chip is dormant or sleeping most of the time, most of its life, it's not doing anything. It has the code number stored in it, but it's just there silent. But when energy comes in on a certain wavelength, that will activate it and basically provides the electricity for the chip to wake up and to broadcast, and it broadcasts out via radio waves that code number. So it's, uh, it's a different way really of scanning the, the barcode that's on the side of the product, having the RFID chip wake up and broadcast that same code to you. Now RFID has been used in inventory control, inventory management for a long time. More recently it's in things that are a little more controversial like uh, passports and credit cards and I'll get to that in just a moment. But I wanted to show you a couple of RFID tags and a couple of products that I had here in the house. First one's in this package. This uh, a um, portable hard drive came in this package, which is a somewhat expensive electronic in a small that's in a small package. And so down here in the bottom of the pack, if you can see that little white plasticky looking thing with the little black mark on it, that's the RFID tag. Now most of that is not the actual tag. Most of that is actually the antenna. That um, increases the range from with a, which a scanner can actually detect it and communicate with it. Um, but the chip itself is actually just a tiny portion of that. All right, and here's another one. This one was kind of tricky to find. This is in a healthcare, dental care product box. So you would look in it and you would say, no, there's no tag or anything in there. But actually there is cleverly hidden on the side. You see that little bit different color piece of paper there? That's the RFID tag. Now I'm going to pull it out and see if I can do it without ripping it into pieces and show you exactly what it looks like. All right, I tried not to tear it up too much, but oh, it doesn't want to come all in one piece. I think I got most of it here. Let me show it to you. It's basically very adhesive on one side. You almost might think it's uh, you know, part of the, the boxing material that, that they use the adhesive to seal the box up. But if you look carefully, you can see there's a pattern in the paper. And then up in the top, there's all these lines. And the lines are actually the antenna. And again, the RFID tag is probably a little bit of printed electronic circuitry right in the middle of that. So that's most of an RFID tag right there. You've probably seen these and not realized what they were. And the thing that I think they're mainly used for is inventory management. They want to keep track of pallets of things and boxes of things, where they are in the distribution chain, where they need to go. And so it's very helpful. Actually, Walmart is the supposed to be the largest user of RFID tags in the whole world. Now, if you're looking to get information about RFID tags, it may be because you've heard the latest scare that uh, passports and credit cards with RFID tags could be scammed where somebody comes up near you with a portable RFID scanner and they actually will activate the chip in the passport or in the credit cards and it will send all your information and now they can make a phony passport with your name and they can make fake credit cards to make purchases. That's really overblown because the, if you remember what the RFID is, is it's an identifier, it's a number. And in, even though they could put more information into that chip and it probably could store a, a fair amount. Generally they just put in a code number and that code number is really of no use unless you have access to the database to their entire system where that code number corresponds to some number for a product or a person or a credit card number and that's really how it works. So just having that number really isn't that helpful in most cases for people who might want to scan to grab your RFID information. 
And there's also the fact that it's a limited distance, especially with those handheld wand scanners, you often need to have be within a few inches of the chip in order for the amount for that power that it puts out to be enough to activate the chip and wake it up and have it transmit the information. So it's not like someone from across the room with a handheld scanner is going to be getting your RFID number. They would have to be pretty close to you and um, behaving a little bit oddly, I would imagine, um, in order to activate the chip and to get the information out of it. Now again, the chips, the information in the chip, the number that they get, usually, at least in the case of passports and credit cards, it's encrypted, which means it's scrambled. So the number they're going to get is actually a different number from the real number. And again, without access to the system to put the number in to bring the thing up, it's really not of much use to them. Now briefly about the passports. I've got a couple passports here. Yeah, these are not all mine. It's members of my family. This is, um, this is a newer passport. There's a little symbol down here that tells you it's got an RFID chip in it. And then this is the older passport which, without any RFID chip. But it's real easy to tell which is which just by feeling them. This old one here, when I go to bend it, I mean it bends easily. This one, uh -uh, it's, it, the reason for that isn't the RFID chip. Remember, that's really tiny, like sometimes as small as the grain of sand. The reason I can't bend this one is the passport agency on all the RFID enabled passports has put a special cover on it in the cover on both the front and back of the passport that blocks RFID transmission, which means if your passport is closed, nobody's going to be able to activate and read the RFID chip, not the passport agency. If you're standing there in line with it closed, they can't get any information out of it. Only when you open it and the RFID chip is exposed to the scanner, gets the energy, transmits the ID, that's when all the action happens. So the, if you have a passport with a little symbol on it, that means it's an RFID passport. So long as you keep it shut, there's no need to go out and buy special cases to put your passports in to protect against people grabbing your RFID information. In my wallet, I looked through it and I looked for an RFID card, couldn't find one. Not a single RFID credit card, my driver's license, library card, membership cards, no RFID in my wallet. But if I were worried about it, which again, I explained to you why really I'm not that worried about it. Um, they do sell something. My father sent me these. I got them in the mail a couple days ago. And these are scanner guard cards. Um, 1995 for a set of two. And what you're supposed to do with this, it's got some uh, material in it, some, some metal fiber sort of thing, I would imagine, that you take this, you put it in your wallet, one on one side of your credit cards, the other one back on the back of the credit cards, and this provides the barrier so people can't scan your credit cards. So that's the story with RFID. It's a technology that's been used for some years. It's being used more often now. So basically, if you pay with something with your credit card, you don't need to hand it over to them. You can just basically put it near the little device they'll have there at the counter and it will transmit the stored number and then that will go into their system, into the bank system, find your actual credit card and charge the amount to it. And the same with the passports, it just makes it easier for the passport agency people. They of course still take your passport and they want to do the stuff with it, but the ones with the RFID, it basically brings up the database for them. So on their computer screen, they don't let you see. I'm sure they see a picture of you, they see all your information, everything they know about you. So when they ask you some of those uh, seemingly innocuous questions about, oh, so where do you work and so forth, they probably see the answer on the screen. And with that information, they have a better chance of knowing if you're trying to scam them, if you've got a fake passport, something like that. So really RFID technology is nothing to fear, but if you do have this irrational fear you can't let go of, um, the age-old solution to that is a good old piece of aluminum foil.